it's Ben Housel here, and this is the first of three videos I'm doing on compositing in Final Cut Pro 10. Now in this first video, we're gonna be looking at how we create a basic green screen, how we move that green background from a video you've created in Final Cut Pro 10. We're gonna be using a not so perfect background so that we can kind of highlight some of the issues that pop up when you're kind of knocking out your green screen, looking at how you get the perfect kind of mask um, for those videos. In the second video, we're gonna be having a look at how we work with double exposure in Final Cut Pro 10. And then in the third video, we're gonna be compositing and animating using the stupid Raisins Arrow Pot plugin from FX Factory. All these three videos are sponsored by FX Factory, so definitely go and check them out. Uh, without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we work with green screens in Final Cut Pro 10. So in this first of three videos, we're gonna be covering how to do the fundamentals of green screening. So basically we're gonna be knocking out the background um, of this uh, video uh, in which you can see me flying up here. And basically in the other two videos, we're gonna be having a look at some different compositing that we can do. So the second video is gonna cover how we do this type of double exposure effect. And then the third video is gonna be all about how we animate a motion track, these arrows popping on from the Stupid Raisins Arrow Pop plugin. So basically we're gonna start a new project timeline here to work with then we'll call it green screen tutorial and 1080p and 1920 by 1080 is all perfect and I have recorded kind of a variety of different green screens in the past uh, the one we're going to be using uh, for today is actually a super quick version that I did and basically um, it has lots of problems with it in terms of the, the lighting of it which is often the way that you kind of get that footage. So we're gonna have a look at how to fix this, which I think will be useful um, for people who don't have that kind of perfect studio set up for their green screens. So obviously normally you would wanna set up your green screen so it's nicely lit and a bit flatter than it is in this particular example, but this is the example we're gonna go with. So, so the first thing we need to do here is pop our background image onto our timeline. So we're gonna drag that down and then we'll drag down our green screen video. I'm going to use the shortcut Shift and Z to zoom into my timeline and then we're just going to trim this down and basically what I want is I've kind of popped my arms up in front here so we're going to grab a little bit of this clip from before then I'm going to drop the audio down and we'll just drag this back to the beginning and we'll finish this off just before I walk away so we have around five six seconds of footage there to green screen so there's two main steps to this the first is to kind of knock out the green screen in the background of this video so to actually add a color key to this and select the color and key it out in final cut pro 10 and the second is to use some of the masks to actually remove some of this extra area where we don't have a green screen um, around the edge but obviously we don't want someone's hand kind of popping out in the background here so we'll come to our effects across on the right hand side you can toggle them on here and we will scroll down to keying first of all and we're going to use the color keyer for this so basically you can see right from the get-go when i hover over it probably knows i want to use a green screen and so it's going to do a kind of quick job of that uh, when we kind of first start out so in Final Cut Pro we have a few different tools uh, for working um, on the green screens so the first ones to mention are these three different views so we have the composite so kind of what our video is going to look like in the end um, we have our mask um, and we can see we've got lots of kind of gray areas in the mask here as well which are areas that are not completely kind of uh, knocked out uh, when we're actually working on this and then we have our original image and we're going to go to this just to select and sample uh, some kind of areas here of our green screen so hopefully this will help to improve our green screen so you can see if we look at the mask here as we kind of modify this shape here we're improving um, what's being masked out so it's kind of making a better selection including all those kind of curves and folds in that green screen in the background so this sample color is super useful also um, if we go back to our original here we can sample our edges as well so basically we can hover this marker along the edge come to our mask and then just kind of modify this until we're getting what we want and sometimes it will help and sometimes it won't but there we go so you can see here we're not really improving the finding of the edge there but if we add another one down here then hopefully these two different kind of edges will mean that we improve our mask a little bit so we are detecting the edges there and it's kind of helping a little bit but not uh, a lot um, but what we can do is also fill the holes um, in our 
mask as well so we can use these sliders to actually fill areas of the image where things aren't masking out properly uh, we can change the edge distance I'm going to go to the composited version here and you can see uh, we're getting a pretty good key um, of that background um, some of these areas of green might be a bit confusing they are not the green screen uh, they are actually lights in the video in the background so let's just pull this so we don't have quite so much green in the background uh, and you can see we're getting a decent key there uh, so we can also kind of work on the spill level and we'll come down to our matte tools as well where we can kind of modify the contrast that matte. and it's also useful to come to this black and white image here as well to kind of see how we're improving the matte with the matte tools with the contrast and everything like that and we can shrink it a little bit so sometimes if you see a little bit of green around your edges I'm just going to go to 100% view here then sometimes you might want to just shrink your mask a little bit um, or maybe go to minus one here we can also expand it out as well so you kind of get a bit of an outline there we'll go to minus one and that will just kind of trim off uh, some of the edges there and then we can also kind of erode the edges as well so that is the basics of adding the the green screen here um, we also have uh, kind of some tint suppression as well which basically you can see is adding magenta uh, to the edge of our image here to get rid of the green to kind of counteract the green um, but it's actually making my pants pink there so I'm going to leave that dialed down a little bit and then what we might also want to do as well is just kind of come into our color correction here as well and basically uh, if we hold down command and tap 7 and we can bring up our color correction and we can also kind of just try and improve the color of our image so you might lose some of the the richness of your image when you actually add the key so sometimes uh, just coming back in and adding a little bit of color correction to kind of get those levels working just right can be can be handy we are seeing the whole image here so really I'm using this as a guide but we're also seeing things in the background layer as well so let's hide our color tools here and so now you can still see we've got the hand there and everything like that so this is where we are going to come back to fit and we are going to come to our masks and we're going to use a draw mask for this so basically we're going to drag a draw mask onto our layer and now sometimes the draw mask doesn't show up straight away um, if you come to the video tools then it can show up or you might need to kind of scroll down and make sure you've got the draw mask selected so you get that add control points option there and basically for this I don't need to draw all the way around I'm just making a mask and we'll zoom out a little bit here so we can come away from the edge we're just making a mask to mask out those other areas of the image so you can see without the draw mask we basically see the hand and the elevator here in the background but with the draw mask we've removed those other elements of the image and if we want we could feather it a little bit there might still be some bits of gray in the edge around here depending on how good your keying is um, for the the color key um, so a little bit of feather in the draw mask um, isn't always a bad thing just to kind of make sure that you blend in to that background image as well I don't have any hard lines that pop up when you export things out so we'll scroll up and go back to our composite here and so now you can see we've got a pretty good key and mask um, for our image so if I want to get rid of this red line again if I just click at the top here on effects it will deselect the draw mask and I can now uh, kind of play this through and we have a pretty good mask I'm having a look at the edges here I might also just kind of stretch this out I'm gonna hide these things across on the left and we'll go to 100% and then play this through and I'm just pausing it sometimes on the playback um, things don't render in full quality you might sometimes notice a little bit of fuzziness around the edges so I'm basically playing it and then just pausing it to make sure the different parts of my video are sharp and that actually looks pretty good so basically um, these are our keying effects in Final Cut Pro 10 we will go on in our next tutorial to have a look at how we uh, kind of make this double exposure effect and then we'll have a look at how we kind of animate uh, these green screened or kind of composited effects um, to add a little bit more to it. Oh, one more quick thing as well. Backgrounds aren't always as saturated as your foreground. So what I'll often do with a background here 
is if I come to my effects, I might do two things. One is grab a little bit of a Gaussian blur. So the background is just a little bit out of focus. And then also come into my color options and my exposure and just wash it out a little bit. So just drop the contrast um, a bit so that basically your background is not more contrasty than your in focus kind of foreground, which is kind of a bit of a weird thing for someone flying over a city. But uh, there we go. We might also reverse this clip as well so that we're kind of flying in the same direction as the camera's moving in the background as well to make it more realistic. Um, so that's a quick overview of how to green screen. Um, we'll go and have a look now in the next tutorial at how we create this double exposure effect. And then we'll go on and have a look at how we use the arrow pop tools from Stupid Raisins um, that you can get on FX Factory.